Okay, so hello and welcome to this video. This is a, another UPS video. In this one, I'm going to be rebuilding one of my old UPSs. This was featured on the channel quite some years ago, uh, probably around 2014, 2015. Uh, and that's the last time I had to do anything with it. It's now dead though, unfortunately. This has been running my main workstation computer and gaming rig. And uh, it doesn't turn on anymore. It did turn on and it worked, but it would go into a uh, battery alarm and just register that the batteries died more or less straight away which means the cells are at the end of their life now anyone who's watched the channel previously or watched me doing these kind of videos before you'll know i usually always use uasa cells and i'm not doing that this time the main reason is the s supply of them and the price of them now is absolutely insane this has currently got uasa cells in it the ones from probably 2014 15 ish i don't think i've rebuilt it since on this particular unit I'm using this time, these are pro Elec cells, these are model PL01438, these are considerably cheaper than the UASA cells at the minute. When I bought the UASA cells previously, they've been around 40-ish pounds each. At the minute, the best price I can find on these is around 57, 58 pounds each. That's kind of insane. Um, previously, they were 40 quid, they're now 58 quid each these have only cost me 37 pounds each delivered so that is a massive difference in price so i'm going to try these out for a change and we'll see what the lifespan is like on these and the runtime duration does it make that much of a difference will it last quite as long i don't know i average at least sort of five years on average out of these uasa cells previously which is why i always use them but i'm not spending getting on for nearly double the price that's kind of ludicrous so anyway, let's rebuild this battery pack, put these in and see how things go. First of all, this is a Smart UPS 1500, really basic unit, there's loads of these around, they're dead reliable, just keep on top of the cells and they, uh, they do the job. You just pull the front panel off with those little tabs there, take it out, then you take the two screws out of the top, as you've just seen me do, and this front unhooks. This tape may be connected, you can just cut it and remove this completely out of your way if you want. Oh, one thing that's probably worth doing, if your unit is not completely dead especially, is on the back panel of these, they've got a battery disconnect, which is this pin here. You just pull that out and it disconnects the, the cells from the, the board inside. So it's worth disconnecting that now um, before you start removing the cells. I'm not too fussed with this unit being completely dead as it stands. But it's worth noting. So uh, you can see here, uh, April 15, I've wrote on these. You may or may not be able to see that too well. I'm just going to get these out of the unit. So sort of tip it forwards or surprise them out with a screwdriver or something. And we'll get them out. There we go. So there's the pack coming loose this is just held together with sellotape this one and I have cut this apart previously to, to do some bits and pieces on it but we get this out undo the connector this just pushes and pulls so just snaps together pulls apart and we'll get this stuff out of the way and then let's rebuild the pack um, with these new cells okay so with most of the stuff now cleared out of the way and a bit of room to work I've also unwrapped the batteries I've kept the uh, screws that come with them. They come with uh, screw slash nuts and bolts with washers and things. Uh, I don't know if I'll be using those. I might just use the ones that are already on this pack. But anyway, um, first thing is I'm going to break apart the old pack here. So I'm just going to take this off. The tape's already gone on this because I say cell tape's not the best for this roll. Pull this off. Get the guard off. And on the other side here, we've got the other guard is a bit tighter, but something like that. We'll get these out of the way. Then we've got the fuse, so we want to take that off. I'm going to take the fuse off first, so I'm just going to use a screwdriver and some long nose pliers for this. Pop that in there. Loosen that off, you can see the batteries are coming apart now. 
There we go. Have to wiggle that a bit to get the bolt out. I'm just going to screw these together for a moment so they don't get lost anywhere. Let's take the other side off. There we go. Turn these around. Let's take the connector off now. Another one, and the final one. Okay. So with that done, these can go out of the way into the recycling, and we'll get the new cells. And we'll build these up first, so I'll do this end first, and I'll put the connector on this end for the power. Negative side first, so black to black. I'm just going to do these finger tight and then we'll tighten them up in a moment. And red to red. So now that they're on loosely, what we can do is tighten them up with the pliers again. So I'm just going to push that down. And I'm going to try and hold it with the pliers and hold the tab at the same time so it doesn't ride up too much because we have to think that plastic guard's got to go back on there we go and the other one this one's a bit low so i'm just going to wind this back there and then do it up again Stay where I put you. Okay, they're both tight now. There's no movement at all on them, you can see. So that's good. Now we'll turn around. And I'm not going to strap these together until I've done the uh, fuse, because the fuse might set the space in. They don't always go flush, sometimes you need a little gap between them. But we shall see now with the fuse. There's no particular orientation, this doesn't matter. So that's just got to go in there, so long as it'll line up with your holes. We'll start with this side. I'm just going to, again, do this finger tight on each side. Just to... Get it most of the way so we can position it. Oh, actually, these will fit right snugly up to each other. Perfect. So I'm just going to get in here now. These are always quite tight to uh, do up. It's actually gripping itself on the back on that one, so... Oh, it's rounding off a little, so... Let's just get in there and... A bit of a turn. The other side. I'm going to do that with my finger, and then last bit of a turn, and that is nice and tight now. So we're going to put these guards back on, you can see there's actually grooves there where we're supposed to sit uh, between the cells, so we can uh, get these in place. That one seems to fit nicer there, this one's got a bit of a sticky pad on it still, so this will go over this end. And they cover like that to protect the terminals. Now we just need to sort of stick this together. So I'm going to be using electrical tape for this, the PVC tape. This is better than the cellar tape. It doesn't tend to just crack and fall apart like that tape was doing. So first thing, I'm going to just go around them, stick each other together at the bottom. I'm probably going to be right in the way of the camera doing this, but there's not much I can do about that. So we're just taping that up back to itself. And then we'll 
rip that off. And then, when they're sort of strapped together that way, I can tip them over. And I can get the tape wrapped around these. So, what I do for these is I just stick it all the way over the top and around the bottom of the pack. So, like this. And then rip that. And the other one as well. Get that back in place. Making sure it's in the right position. And we'll stick that to itself. And that's the pack rebuilt basically. Uh, you could put more tape around the middle or around the top if you wanted to, but for me, this does the job. You can see that they're, they're held together enough. If I hold only one battery, the other one's not falling off or anything, it, it's fine because we're literally going to put it in there, close the door, and uh, it's not going to go anywhere until these die. So, If it was something that was moved around more, then I would say, yeah, possibly go a bit more hamstrapping them together, but it's not really worth it. The other important thing... Uh, which I did in pen on the last lot and forgot to do originally is I always label the batteries with the date in which I installed them so I've just printed these off on my little Dymo label printer um, they're quite cheap and readily available it's only this little handheld one I did a video on it a while ago I'll put the link up here but these are, are worth getting and I just stick this on the end where you can see it once you open the uh, the door so that would be on here, just anywhere, wherever, to say the date on which we put these batteries in the unit. So here is the UPS, put the door inside it. Uh, I'm just going to get some of the dust out of the bottom. Now we're going to put these cells back in by plugging them in first. And then sitting them over. Also watching that the power connector doesn't get crushed or anything inside. Along the side of the batteries. There we go. That's in. This will now hook into the bottom again. And we can fold that up and screw it back in. So the screw is out. Our little control panel wire stays at the top and put the screws back in to hold everything together. The next step is just to calibrate this thing so the runtime gives us an appropriate reading and it's kind of accurate, which I'll show you how to do now. So we'll just hook this front panel back on. I have to pick the front end up a touch just to get this in and then push it in. So now the batteries are back in. I'm going to reconnect them using the uh, plug at the back. You let a bit of an act like a crack sound when you put that in. Um, just make sure everything's reset on the back. And we'll set up to do a uh, calibration and test. Okay, so in order to do a calibration, for this, to get it reading an appropriate time, so it beeps at the right point when it's almost nearly dead. Not all the time. Um, what you're going to need is a fixed load of some kind. I prefer to use a light or something that's not going to come to any harm when the power goes out, because we're going to run this till it dies. This is a 500 watt or 400 watt halogen floodlight. I think it's a 500 actually in there. Um, so that draws a good amount of power. This is a 908. 80 watts rated unit so this is basically half a load for this unit or thereabouts you want to put at least a third of the rated load on them so on a 900 watt unit you would want to put at least 300 watts of load connected and you want a fixed constant load which is what this is it doesn't go up and down like a computer would as you're using it it draws more power less power more power this is a constant draw but anyway i've got the mains connected so this is going into the wall in a minute just to power the unit 
and I'm going to plug this light into the back but first let's just plug it in and make sure the unit comes on okay so when I connect it to the mains the fan should start running and it should uh, detect that it's got mains power again so so there we go we heard it sort of click into life the relays came the fans running on the side so that's a good sign let's try and turn it on and it I don't know what it's going to read. It can be very hit and miss in terms of the battery indication and stuff because it doesn't know that we've changed the batteries. We've not told it that yet. So You can do this in software. There's ways you can set the date of the batteries in being installed, um, calibrate the runtime, etc. Okay, so it's actually reading that it's almost fully charged. Now it's done a quick self-test. Everything seems okay. What I'm going to do is just leave it now for... A good amount of time to make sure it charges itself up to 100% because you need to go from a full charge to completely dead and then charge it again to recalibrate. I'm going to wait for this meter to go full and then give it another 15 minutes or something. Okay so with this unit now definitely fully charged up it's been stood for a while since it reached full. I'm uh, going to connect to the load being this light. I'm just going to put it somewhere where it's not going to melt anything. Let's move this plastic wrapper out of the way. Put it on top of this metal computer case. I'm just going to plug this in to the back. And there's now a lot of light going that way, as you can see. You can also see that we've got two bars of load on this thing. And all I'm going to do now is literally unplug the power from the back of it, or unplug it from the wall. So, that's now disconnected from the mains. And you can see it thinks it's about to die, um, more or less straight away. And it's showing full signal, but it's beeping. That's because it's got no idea how much runtime and life the cells are in it. It thinks it's still got the bad batteries in it. So by doing this, leaving it until it completely runs down to the point where it turns itself off and dies, then recharging it, it allows it to retrain and reset the memory in the unit for the new cells and then it will give us an accurate reading and won't do this alarm beeping anymore so i'm now just going to leave this to run down uh the current time is 3 30 pm and uh i'll come back and update when it's died basically so i'll leave this running for a while usually i would expect somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes of runtime for this model of unit with that light on it in the past so we'll see Okay, so it's just switched itself off. You can see it's just gone to a flashing light now. Uh, and we're on exactly 10 to 4. So it ran for exactly 20 minutes, pretty much. So, I'm going to plug this back into the wall now. And then I can hear that it started humming very slightly. The transformer's buzzing. So it's starting to charge itself and get itself sorted again. I'm just going to leave it for a while. There's the fan coming in to cool the charging circuitry. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it like this for a little while uh, and let it get some charging. It may turn itself on, if not I may have to turn it off and back on again and then we'll leave it to fully charge up properly. Okay so it's been around an hour um, and I just left this running and as you can see it's actually come back on, on its own and uh, it's over halfway charged so far. So yeah that's uh, that's job done pretty much. I'm just going to leave this now to charge up to full and then I'm going to go and put it back on my computer. That's pretty much it for this video. If uh, you found this video helpful, please leave a like. If you've got any questions, put them in the comment section down below. Hopefully this was a little better than some previous versions along the lines of these that I've done. But you can let me know. And get subscribed to my channel for future random technology videos like this one. And thank you for watching.